Yo, what's happening? You already know. This is your boy Prime, and it's about damn time. Now today, what I'm gonna talk about today is a story, a legitimate story from me to you, where I had a situation where I had to put a fool out. Well, you know, and I'll explain why, you know, sometimes you got to put these fools out. And I'm also going to explain to you how you're not to feel bad when you're putting these fools out. And how you protect yourself from these fools so that they don't go back and say you were drinking and driving and get you deactivated. You know how the game goes. So I'm going to explain all of those so that way, that way you understand how to do it, when you should do it and how to protect yourself from the, the recourse or the retaliation is a better word to use that they're gonna they're gonna come at you. I mean they may hit you with the one star for the rating. That's one thing. But the retaliation is when they lie. And that's what's important. So essentially what I did wrong here was I went away from protocol. I was picking up in residential areas. And as you probably know about me, my name is Prime Time. And Prime Time don't pick up in no damn residential areas. That That's the protocol. I went away and I broke poor protocol. And guess what happened? I picked up one person. Lady was cool. Right? Got a got a stack of course, which which is something I almost never accept because I don't know where it's coming from, so I assume the worst, and I don't even accept it. So this this time I like I said I broke protocol, hit that button, boom, got myself an idiot on the line. Didn't know it till I got there. I went to go pick up, and I'm 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 one of those kind of drivers that's super precautious on every rider, no matter his morning time. I don't care where, where I'm picking them up from. I don't care what's what's going on. I'm always precautious about everybody, right? So I have never taken the wrong rider. Not even once. Okay? Not take never taken a ride, a wrong ride in my entire time doing this. And I've been doing this for three years now. So and and basically how I do that is one thing. Number one you must always verify the passenger. This is for newbies too, and for the people that's been doing it wrong for years. I'm letting you know, this is how you're supposed to do it, right? Number one, they get in the car. Hello, how you doing? What's your name? You always ask them for their name. You just don't assume that that's the right person. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Drivers, I get in the car with drivers, as a passenger, and they never, I have never been asked who I was. I'm, they just drive around somebody, they don't even know that's the right person. It's crazy. So, number one, always ask who you're picking up. Don't give them the name, because that's the only thing you have. If you tell them, hey, you Steve? Yeah, I'm Steve. But, uh, we're going to change the destination. That's fraud, and that's what that that's what's gonna happen, okay? They're gonna tell you to change this nation because that's not really them and they're not really going there. So, number one, always ask for the name. Number two, always verify the destination. Because the last thing you want to do is be taking somebody the wrong way because they made a mistake, put the wrong address in there, and they're gonna give you a one star for not even verifying or taking them the wrong way, because they gotta pay more money. And more money means more hurt in the pocket, means one star for you. That's what it equals one star. So make sure you're doing that, okay? And it also helps prevent from fraud because uh, you'll be able to know because if they don't know that destination that's in there, then you might want to go back to rule number one and make sure that you, you ask the right question to make sure you got the right passage, you know what I'm saying? So you always want to make sure that you got the right stuff going on. Okay, so anyway, how, how all that correlates to kicking this guy out, let me tell you. So I did all of that. 
I asked him, like, as soon as he got in the car, it was, it was kind of one of those names I wasn't sure if I was picking up a female or a male, but I assumed it would probably be more so a, a female. So a male come to the car. That's a residential area. He had a house. One level home looks like. He's already outside waiting. So I, there's nobody else outside. So I'm assuming he's my guy. He is at the address that is in the app. So boom, I put those two, two together. He comes walking toward the car. I assume that he's my passenger instead of uh, what I thought I was going to get. So he gets in the car. And I, I go through my protocol or whatever. I say, how you doing today? Uh, what's your name, sir? And the first thing he says is Mike Mike. And I'm like, Mike Mike or something like that. I'm thinking, that's not on my app. So I said, oh, I said, okay. So I said, that's cool, Mike Mike. But uh, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for you to verify the name that's on the app. So I get, I get real specific with him at that point. And he says, oh. He says the customer's name. And then he goes on and says, oh, that's my mother. And I have her name tattooed on my forehead. And I tells him, oh, that's fine. I mean, I just wanted to make sure I was getting the right person. That's all. Because in my head, I'm, I'm thinking, dude, I can't even see the tattoo on your head from where I'm sitting. And I definitely can't read it backwards. And I definitely don't give a damn. It, it's just so many things I'm thinking like, okay. And I want to read. I want to. I want to go back a little bit, just a little bit, just real quick. Stay with me. Another thing I always like. If somebody asks me what my name is. I always offer it up. I'm. I'm Javon, and you are. And that's how I get right back to it. So if somebody asks you who you are, as they as you're asking them who they are, that's fine. Just tell them who you are, so that they feel comfortable. And you say, I'm Javon, and who are you? You still got to know. Because you just told them who you are, but I still don't know who you are. So I still got to, I'm not going to feel good until I find out that. Moving on. So he gets in the car, we're driving. We get that all out the way. We hash that out. Uh, he start going in his pocket. Oh, man. I'm like, man, what's up, man? Because <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking something crazy about to happen. Something, something that I'm not like. He says, well, I left. I actually I actually brought my, my mom's keys with me. She has to get to work and she needs her keys. Can you go back? And at this point, I'm already like, because I don't like going back. I don't like to backtrack. You know, I don't like to backtrack, right? So at this point, I'm just like, I'm flustered because, you know, this guy is, he's testing me, you know, and uh, I'm like, okay, so I get off the freeway, and at this point, I'm thinking, I may be putting him out pretty soon, I'm going to let him talk a little bit, give me a good reason, and, you know, he starts going on, talking about some, you know, I never had any problems with an Uber driver like you. Uh, like, you give me all these problems, ask me all these questions and all this. I'm like, bro, I asked you who you were when you got in the car. And, you know, he tried to change the subject. And I was like, nah. I said, don't try to change the subject. I said, listen, when you get in, when you come to an Uber driver's car, we don't know who you are. You're just a person walking toward my vehicle. I don't know who you are. And especially when you're not even a person that, that, you know, the name that you gave me was not on my app. So I really don't know who you are now. I don't even know who that person was. I don't have a picture. I don't have anything. I said, you, on the other hand, you got my license plate number, my picture, my name, what my car looks like. You got all this stuff and I don't have anything. And I'm the one taking the greatest risk. For real? I say, I, at least at least I should be able to ask you who, who you are. And you should be able to give me that. Okay? If you have a problem, give me your name. And I have a problem with you in my car. And I told him that. That's how it is. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about safety. But if you, you ask me who I am, I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm Javon. And who are you? That's how I, I told him that. I explained it to him. That. That's what I would do. 
So he keeps talking and all of this. And, you know, at this point, I'm just like, I'm putting this dude out. Okay, I, I just got to find a good spot to put him out. He talking about some, oh, I forgot to say this. He says, he basically, I'm not even going to say the word. I'm going to let you figure the word out. But he says, he just, he said, he said, my, my end, you can just take me back to my house. Right? Like he, he said the N word, right? Well, you know what it is. He said the N word as if it was a term of endearment. Uh, uh, only problem, number one, is that I don't allow that language in my car. Black, white, whatever. I mean, this, this particular passenger word was white. So it does come off a little bit more offensive to me, uh, but I don't allow that language in my car at all. I think I don't call you out your name like that. You should respect me as well like that. And that's just how it is, right? So I told him, I said, listen, don't don't say that. And that that right there was the killer. That, 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 I knew I was going to kick him out uh, based off of that. And, you know, the whole time, the video is being recorded. Just like this video here, I have a uh, video and audio surveillance in my vehicle and it's going it's rolling the whole time and it's catching every word you're saying so I'm, I'm looking for a good spot to kick him out he think i'm taking him home because i haven't informed him yet that i'm not going to do that because that's the last thing you want to do if you go if you will kick out professional like i am you don't want to love you don't want to tip them off to what you're about to do because then they can they got time to think about what they're going to do bad to you and, and see how they can get away with it you know what i'm saying but when you kick them out, kind of like like that, you know, like, hey, you just pull in some AR, you can get out right here. They don't have time to think about what they can do to you. If they're going to do something, they're going to do something. But they ain't have no time to think about it, though. So I uh, pull over. I see I see like four people, at the, I see four people standing at this uh, gas station, so I know, cool. I pull over. It's broad daylight. I pull over, and I'm like, all right, bro. You can get out right here. But but before he, he does all that, before I kick him out, he's he's on the phone with the person that requested to ride his mother, and he's telling her that how we had this 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 problem. And maybe he's a racist. I don't know. That's what he said. He said, I think the guy may be racist. All I said, all I asked you was who you are. And that somehow triggered you to act to think I was a racist. Remember. The whole conversation started with me asking who he was, and that's the only thing that I kept talking about. Like he tried to change the subject, I didn't want to talk about that. So I tell, I told him right away. I say, listen, don't even change the subject. We talking about this, okay? Because I wanted to aim it and put it in perspective. So the camera is rolling; it's seeing all this stuff. All I was asking him was who he was, and that's the only thing I cared about. All the stuff he was talking about, how I might be a racist or whatever. And how I had some some kind of ill will toward him when he got in the car. Not, you know, I, I even expressed to him, I said, I don't have no problem with you, bro. I say, I say, I don't have a problem with you. You're just a person getting in my car that needs to go someplace. And I'm, and I'm that's what I was supposed to do. I was, I, I, I told him, I, all I wanted to do was get you where you had to go. I mean, I say, I don't like you getting in my car smelling like marijuana. Because now the next passenger, I can't, they can't get in here. For a minute, I have to drive around, air this baby out, spray some air freshener to get that smell out of here so they don't think it was me. I say, yeah, I don't like that, but I don't dislike you personally because I don't know you. I don't know you, so I don't know how to dislike you if I don't know you. That's how I look at it. I mean, some people might look at it differently, but if I don't know you, it's, there's no reason for me to not like you. I'm just a guy driving Uber and Lyft trying to get you from point A to point B and get your money. That's it. <laughs> I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to go out and have a drink with you. Nothing. So basically, going way back to what I said, I was breaking protocol by picking up in residential areas. Let me explain why. I don't care if you're picking up in the, in the most richest neighborhood, uh, the rich and famous, or the shameless. You're going to run into issues about either the trip being too short, not making no money, not getting no tips, getting getting some fools like that in your car, you're going to run into issues. It's just a way to, at least at least from my experience. 
uh, you're not really going to make a lot of money that way. And what happens? Okay, check this out. I put him out. As I'm putting him out, he's talking about, he, he literally says, he threats me with a gun. Like, he didn't show me, he didn't brandish the gun, but he had his hand in his pocket. And he said, you want me to pull this pole out? Want me to pull this gun out? Want me to, you know, all this? And I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. Just go ahead and shut the door, man. Whatever, man. Just shut the door. Can you shut the door, please? And remember, the whole time I'm being professional, I never swear to him or nothing. That's how you kill him. You kill him with kindness. See, I'm not scared like, uh, what's that dude's name? Uh, a wackerpreneur. He got he got his ass whooped by somebody, and he's been scared to drive ever since. And that's why he keep telling you not to try, because he's a scared crybaby. See me, I ain't scared at all. Like the dude was talking about killing me, and I said, man, whatever, man. If you're gonna do it, just do it, man. Just shut the door first. <laughs> because I'm gonna tell you like this, I know real killers. I do. I know real gangsters, man. And I'm going to tell you right now, real gangsters don't put their hand in their pocket and talk about it. They do it. So if you talking about it, that means you ain't going to do shit. Okay? For real. And it, it, it depends on your person. Like, if you a calm dude like me in that situation, you don't show no fear, then you're, you're actually the gangster. Because you're like, man, whatever, man. Shoot me if you got to. But before you do that, just shut my door. Like, that's all I care about. Just shut my door so I can go, bro. Okay? Because you ain't going to do shit. Okay? You's a punk, and that's what you are. Okay? So, I use that situation, and most people will be like, ah, I'm tired of this stuff. I'm going home. <laughs> Not your boy. I use that as a teaching for myself because I already, I know better. And I know I shouldn't have been there. I'm thinking, why was I over it? I said, you know what? Don't worry about it, Javon. I'm going to where I'm going to where I normally go and where I, I pretty much live. I don't live at the airport. Just so you guys know, I live in an area. It's called University Circle, and I don't mean live there, but I mean I actually go there, and that's where I pick up ninety percent of my rides. Okay, and I go there. And I sit. I wait for hospital rides. I wait for hotel runs. I wait for people that work for, work at these hospitals, you know, patients. That's it. I don't pick up anything outside of that, and I try to stick to the script, and I usually go right when I do that. Now, of course, I do. I do. I, I have several platforms that I do throughout the day. I do Uber. I do Lyft. I do DoorDash. I do Postmates now. We got Postmates now. Uh, I do another one called Cluster Truck. And I run these all together at the same time because that's what Maximo does for you. You can actually, if you download Maximo, you can actually run all those apps at the same time. It's pretty pretty profitable. Now, so I do all those. I run them all at the same time, except for maybe on the weekend. I only run Uber and Lyft. Uh, like Saturday being a weekend is what I'm talking about. It's the one day I don't run those other ones because I just try to stick to just ride share at that time. Uh, but, um, uh, so I'm running all these apps. I get a ping. It's just basically, I'm already sitting right where I need to be at the hospital. I get a ping to go basically what's behind me and pick up at the hospital. I go pick them up. It's a, a Lyft concierge API ride. If you don't know what that means, it basically means money. <laughs> okay. That's basically what it means. It means you're going to get a passenger that's not paying for the ride. The insurance company's paying for the ride, so if they want to go far, it don't matter. Money is no option. And this ride actually went 149 miles or something like that. So anyway, uh, it was crazy. I made $144. Give me a second, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put I'm going to put that up there for you. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Give me one second. Okay. $144, people. I, and I guess what? People be saying, they call those kind of rides unicorns. Now, the last time, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm 37 years old. I've been to the zoo. I've been 
to different places around the U.S. I haven't gone to the country yet, but that's one of the things I'm planning on doing. And Rideshare allows me to be able to take these vacations too. But what I'm trying to say is I have never seen a unicorn in my entire life. But a $144 ride, I see those a lot. I see them at least every couple weeks. I see $40 to $50 rides every week, dog. I keep telling you people, man, they're not unicorns. You just don't know where to go and get them. You know why? Let me explain to you why. Because you only, you pick up, listen, you pick up at the airport. That's all you do. You sit there for hours. There's a, there's a guy that's in Pittsburgh. I don't live in Pittsburgh, but I know a guy that drives in Pittsburgh, right? And he, he basically drives, and we're, we're like in this group called the Surge Chaser Group, which is a Zello, uh, Zello app, uh, which is like a walkie-talkie app. A lot of drivers use it, but not enough, right? A lot of people are just walking around right here and don't have any communication with any other drivers. But anyway, he, 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 he was telling me how he was talking to this guy that had 100 hours on the app. He do what they call premium out there. They don't have select or whatever. They have a thing called premium. And it's essentially select. I know some markets are different than others. So there is called premium in Pittsburgh. He said he said he looked on the app. He told him how you make like $1,600 a week, every week. He drove 100 hours. 100 hours in one week. And that's on the app. So that whenever he turned off or whatever, that, those, that time doesn't count. But a hundred hours. Okay. So, if that's true, a hundred hours, I mean, that's, I mean, you don't have time to do anything. You just see, you know, he sit there and he sleep at the airport. Listen, he didn't have a lot of trips because he does premium and he's sitting there waiting on only specifically premium ride at the airport so he's waiting for three hours four hours at times you know to get a a nice run you know and then typically on the x a ride from the airport from pittsburgh airport to downtown pittsburgh it's like a 22 dollar run so that's 22 dollars every trip so you can make a little bit like here in cleveland a trip from that uh, from uh, airport to downtown is about $13, $11, somewhere around there. It's not going to be a lot. That's a regular non-surge, non-prime time ride because it's a shorter distance. Obviously, right? But, so you can make some money there. But anyway, this guy's sitting there all day, sitting there all day. Like, that's not what ride share was for. Ride share is not for you to be sitting around all day. You're supposed to be able to get out there, get it, and go home. Okay? That's how it was supposed to be designed. So I don't, I don't like to waste time and put in all them hours. Nah, <laughs> I'm not. I work about forty eight hours a week. I, I make about anywhere between eight to a thousand dollars a week. That's cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not for you, but that's cool with me. It pays my bills. You know what I'm saying? And um, the weeks I fall short of a thousand, so what? I, I did my time. That's what I do, man. And, and, what I do is I get big rides. That way I don't have to hang out there as long as you guys do. You know what I'm saying? I don't work nowhere near as hard as you guys. And, and, and I, it's been times I talk to people that tell me they work 70, 80 hours a week. And they only making $800 a week. And I'm thinking, I do that in 48 hours. And you tell me it took you 80? You're doing something wrong. You're doing what I was. You're doing what I was telling you about. You going, you picking up people in residential areas. You sit at the airport too long. You wasting too much time. See, because what I do is I, I know that I'm only gonna be out for eight hours every day that I'm out there. I work Monday through Friday, uh, from like basically like nine to five, nine to six, six thirty, whatever, and then uh, on a, on a weekend, Saturday. I work from four to, you know, when the bar is closed, basically. You know what I'm saying? It depends on some scenarios if I work at, if I start my shift at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock, 8.30, whatever. So keep in mind that I'm, I'm, I'm typically I'm just telling you various times that I might get out there. But 
at the for the most part, I'm basically out there for eight hours before I quit. Okay, before it's done. So my sense of urgency is very high. I know that I'm only out here for X amount of time. I don't even care. It could be a baseball game going on. I may miss that because I'm going to be done. I go, I work my shift, and I'm peace. And that's what I'll be trying to tell people and show people how to do that. You have to utilize every minute of the day. So even taking breaks can hurt you. I don't take breaks that much. It very, it's not, it's not very, it's not, it's very, very seldom that I'll actually go and get something to eat on a break. And if I do, I'll probably get something to go and to be eating and driving and whatever, you know, and make sure by the time I get a ping, the, the food is gone. Like the, like the customers, the passengers never see me eating and they never see me with a bag of food or whatever. By that time, you know, I, it, it, if I see something that I like, I just throw the food away. I just take the ride. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the food is, is like whatever. I got to get this 45 minute long trip if I see one. Because like, I never turn the app off either. Never, unless I'm, you know, unless I actually take a break. Never turn the app off. I'm always online. Like I'm always waiting because you never know when something gonna come through that's gonna tell you it's money on the line. You see money online, like if it says 45 minutes long, you don't want to miss out on that. A lot of people, a lot of people be saying, they say stuff like, you know, I, I you know, I go to an area and they start pinging me and I don't want them pinging. I just turn the app off. I say, why do you turn the app off? Because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to rise. Okay, listen, you don't have to turn the app off though. My accepting rate is like 12%. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uber and Lyft, they want you to have 100% because they want you to pick up every passenger. No. If I go somewhere I don't want to pick up at, I just simply don't pick up. Now, with Lyft, I you know, I have a Maximo. Maximo has a feature that automatically turns into, switches into last ride status so that I never get a ride like, like, a, like a, a stack ride with Lyft. Never. I haven't got a stack ride with Lyft in I don't know how many months. And Uber... I have the surge so high on there that I can never get a stack ride unless it's a 3.0 or something like that or 2.0 or whatever it is that I got to set. So I never do that. I never get stack rides and whatnot because I don't like those because you don't know where you're going. I like to know where I'm about to pick up at because where you pick up at is how you actually make more money because you can't pick somebody up from a bad neighborhood and expect to bleed them of any money, they don't have any money. <laughs> you cannot squeeze blood out of a turnip, so it, it don't have any money. So you go in a bad neighborhood, expect either A, bad things to happen, or B, a ride that ends up being short, and C, or A, B, and C, or whatever, C, you not to get a tip. Where is the money going to come from, folks? Think about that. You know, I see people pick up in bad neighborhoods all the time, and I'm just like, it should never be anybody getting picked up there. I mean, it should be like, they should be sitting there hitting the button and nobody ever show up. I mean, that's real, because there's no money to be had there, okay? So, but I'm so glad that people do do that, because obviously, it wouldn't be the same for me, because because where I'm at, no one shows up. I'm, no, I'm like the only one there, you know? So... With that being said, man, I hope that this video helped you guys out understand where where my thinking comes from. I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna drive 80 hours a week. Uh, I'm not talking about making two, three thousand. I'm not talking about the 2K club or nothing like that because I'm not making that kind of money. You know, the kind of money I'm making, I'm doing Uber X. I'm doing Lyft Classic. I'm doing several different uh, delivery services that I can run with all together and it's easy because I have Maximo. So I'm, I'm very efficient. I'm out there for eight hours, not eight hours in one minute, eight hours, period, done. I'm out, you know. My last ride is my last ride, that's it. I don't care, okay. So I'm in and out the game. You know, I have respect for people that's out there making that kind of money, two grand a week or whatever, but it does depend on market too. But one thing I can tell you, even in a even in a small market, because the market I'm in, Cleveland, Ohio, 
is the 45th largest city in the United States. So that means we're very small compared to like Chicago or whatever, or uh, I don't know, uh, a New York or something like that. Like the bigger, bigger markets where they're huge, you know, LA, you know, these are huge markets, you know, we're small. And in order for you to be able to make money here, because I probably think honestly, out of all the people that's making money in, in, in Cleveland, it's probably about maybe five people that's making money for real, maybe, okay? And I know all of those people probably, you know what I'm saying? And the reason why is because we live in a small city, uh, a small market, and people don't understand how to drive. If they just think it's easy, just go on the app, hit the button, and just start picking up. <laughs> it's not that easy. So I'm gonna do a little bit more about that in a later video, but today that's been my that's been my time. This is your boy Prime. Time. Don't do the crime, boy. <laughs> if you don't want to do the time. Peace out.